Now, I am a big fan of inspirational quotes and infographics and this one that I have, I first saw it on the new Happy Co and I don't know if you've seen them before but they have lots of amazing just really simple infographics that really tune into giving you that feeling of happiness. So I wanted to see if I could turn that into a moving animation inside Canva. And I'm going to play it for you now, if I zoom out a little bit. And you can see that I have really just taken all the information that is in this page here as a single static graphic and turned it into a moving animation. So I'm going to break down those steps for you just now. First of all, I am in the 1080 by 1920 mobile video template inside Canva. And I'm just going to start off by drawing a simple box. I'm going to change the colour here. And the secret here is we are going to make the maximum use of the match and move transitions, which are these ones you can see here with the little stars. And it's the match and move transition here. This is really the secret to getting this flow and change in size and movement and breakdown of these boxes. Now we start off with getting the square box to increase in size. So I'm going to change this down to one second and I'm going to duplicate the page and go back to the first page and just decrease the size of this so it's really quite small and make sure that it is exactly at the centre of the page and that is what these two red lines here horizontally and vertically mean it's exactly in the centre you can also check that it's in the centre by going to position and if these are greyed out, middle and centre, then it means that it's exactly aligned to the centre of the page. We've got the text box is larger and I'm going to hover across between the two pages and add a transition. Click match and move and now you'll see that that square box is going to nicely increase in size. Next we need to add some text. I'm going to use the font enter here. I'm just going to set this to medium and make the square a little bit bigger so it fills the screen. So once we have our text and the first square in place, then to get this effect where we are adding the colours, I'm going to show you, I'm going to change the colour of this background. You'll see that I actually have some things hidden on the page. So you'll see that I have this square and I also have these lines in this. Now we have this white square here so that when we do the match and move on to the next page what you'll now notice is that this red square is hidden under the white square and that's so the box when it moves we have these bars sitting underneath it to be revealed. So I'm going to show you how to do that just now. So we duplicate the page and on this page we need to and to add the different colour bars which are here and they are just made up of individual rectangles and I'm going to make them the exact same size as the square underneath. So if we now select them all and we copy them and go back to the previous page and we're going to paste in place but this time we are going to layer and centre back because we don't actually want to be able to see the different coloured bars just yet on this page. And we are going to have to add that white, that white box here. Now what I'm going to do just now is to help you understand how I'm building these is I'm going to change the colour of all of these backgrounds just for now until we have got all of our steps in place and then we'll change the backgrounds back to white again. So if I copy and paste this box onto this page and this time I have to go to position and layers and I have to make sure this white box is still sitting in front of the red box because when we add the match and move we don't want the red box to appear on top of the white box. So we now have our 
red box and we also have the coloured bars if I go to position I'll show you we've got our coloured bars here now I'm going to move this red box down to here and you'll notice that at the moment it's sitting in front of this white box which you don't want so we have to make sure that the layers are in the correct order here to do the match and move so now when we add the match and move between our pages and add transition that when we hover across it is going to slide down and reveal the coloured bars underneath. Now you'll notice on the next page that we have then these white lines moving in and with the next bit of text appearing. So on this page we're going to delete this text because we don't need this text. We are going to select a line from our elements and we're going to line it up with the first line of the box. We're going to change the colour to white and we are going to increase the thickness to about 7. And we have to make sure that it is at least the width of the box and then drag it so it just appears from the side. So once we have the first one in place I'm going to copy each line so it is sitting over the top of each colour and then we just move them off to the side for the moment. Now remember when this background is white you're not going to see those lines just yet. I've got the grey background there just now so you can see each step as I do it. We then go down to three B dots and we will duplicate the page and once we're on this one this is when we will move all four lines in front of the coloured boxes and we can remove both of these elements because we don't need these now. We've got the next part of our text and we're going to go up to animate and we're going to use the first one which is rise. We just want it to be appearing up the way on enter. We'll go between both pages and now we will add the match and move transition and you can see that we've got the text moving up into place and the lines moving across. I'm just going to adjust the timings that we have for each page make them a bit longer and this is something you do need to keep adjusting to get the timings right but I like to get all the elements in place on each page first and then we will tweak the timings and you'll notice now when we hover across we've now got lines coming from the top downwards and also the text is coming from the top downwards as well so again we need to go to our previous page so that we can add in the lines so we are just going to add in our lines so they're sitting on top and you won't see them until we are ready to do our next transition so we again three wee dots and duplicate the page on this one we're going to move them down so that they sit in place like so and then this time we need to change the text which is break your goals into steps. I want to have that going over two lines. Now I'll just line it back up the middle again. And this time I'm going to change the rise to be appearing in the same direction as the lines. Then we will add our transition. And you can now see those lines moving into place. But the text is changing over too quickly. So what we're going to do, and I'm also going to change this to the same weight of font as the other ones. Let's click on the text, press three wee dots and go to show timing. And I'm going to change this timing to start showing from just after the transition is finished to about here. So if we just go back through the first few wee steps, we've got really simple small square which now you'll notice that because we've added the coloured lines behind we now have everything transitioning too quickly so again what you want to do is go to your show timing and we are going to have it starting at the start of the next page and we're going to add a little animation to that as well and I think we're going to go with typewriter for the first one just on enter and again, we have to make sure that we don't have this clash of the coloured bars appearing first before the square has transitioned up in size. So again, this is going to be the show timing element. So we'll go to position 
and we're going to select all the coloured bars, three wee dots, show timing and we need to move all of them across so they don't appear until near the end of that page. So you'll see now that we don't have them showing behind the square too soon. So now we have the square increases in size, the text comes in, then you can see we have the transition of the coloured bars. In the next one we've got the lines moving across the way and then in the second one we've got the lines coming down the way and the text all changing as well. Then for the final transition is this one here where we've got the just a single square showing one step at a time. I'm going to show you how to do that effect just now. So I want you to duplicate the page and we're going to select coloured boxes and we're going to reduce the transparency down to 20%. I'm going to zoom in and we need to draw a separate box that is going to sit exactly in place here and we'll change the colour so it's a hundred percent of our original colour and again we need to make sure we have the position and the layers correctly so this time we want to sit it so it's above the coloured boxes but it's behind the squares so that it is perfectly matching and then we need to change our text so we're going to change our text and this time we're going to change the animation that we are using and we are going to use breathe we will need to change our sh timings so that it still shows okay and then lastly we are going to add our match and move transition and if we slowly hover across you'll see that it's now going to change to that faded out and just the one single square shown now if i play this just now the timings aren't going to be right i just want to see you show you how it works before we then tweak all the timings if i start to play it right now lastly i want to remove the gray background now that we have everything in place so now that we've removed the gray background i'm going to play it through for you now the timings aren't going to be right but i want to play it for you first to then show you how I'm going to tweak the timing so that everything all appears at the right moments because this is how you really smooth out your animations and transitions. So if I play this just now, you'll notice that some of it feels a bit slow and some of it feels a bit fast. We haven't quite got the timings right. So I'm okay with the first one, but the second one is far too short. So we're going to make this about two seconds and we're going to reduce the timing of this one because this one was going on for too long. Then we'll increase the timing of that slide and this one to about the same as well. But once you change the timing, what you then need to watch is that your text is appearing at the right time as well. So I kind of feel that this one here where the text is disappearing and the next one coming in could be a little bit smoother. So I'm going to increase animation time here, the duration. And again for this one as well. And then I'm going to go to show timing. I'm going to reduce this down so it doesn't quite cross over with the other one. This one is still, still coming in a little bit quick. So I'm going to change where this text appears and have a wee bit more of a delay. So again, I'm going to change it to about here. And then let's play that. So you can see that when we do this, we really do need to keep going back and forth and back and forth to really nail down the transitions and the timings. Let's try that now. So you can see how we're now starting to get that timing correct. And if I zoom out, close that down and play it from the start. You can see how we get some really nice animations in there. And you'll see that it just turns into really nice graphic animation instead of just always relying on static graphics because there's been no video and reels get so much more engagement and play and reach than just static graphics do.